Clever naturally felt that Sosimo was still pestering Delfina, and so he felt it was necessary to teach this newcomer a lesson. Revealing a sinister smile, he commented, You are right, sir. As Delfina's cousin, I want to express my gratitude to you. He made an inviting gesture. Once they were in the city lord's mansion, he would be in control. The accommodations that Kleber had arranged for Delfina were grand and comfortable. He had also assigned several maidservants to her. However, for Sosimo and Maximus, he arranged a plain wooden house, usually given to servants. Sosimo and Maximus communicated via voice transmission about how despicable this arrangement was in order to avoid detection, but Sosimo could not hide his disdain. Obviously, putting them in the servants' quarters had been conceived as a way to humiliate Sosimo. On the other hand, it was a top priority to avoid instilling any suspicion in Clever that they had ulterior motives for entering the city lord's mansion in the first place. Sosimo focused on convincing Clever that he was only there for Delphina. He commented in a huffy tone, This is clearly the place where the servants live. Is this how you treat your cousin's benefactor? I was hoping to be closer to Delphina's accommodations, so that I could get to know her better. Clever shot back. In my eyes, you are a lowly person, really no different from a servant. Did you really think you were at the same level as Delphina? He paused for effect, then went on. Of course, you are welcome to seek out other living arrangements in the compound on your own. Though I must warn you, guards patrol the perimeter at night, and we wouldn't want you to be mistaken for a thief and shot. More importantly, Delphina needs rest. I, as her cousin, will assure she is not disturbed. You shouldn't expect to see her again." As he spoke, Kleber clapped his hands. A middle-aged man suddenly appeared beside him. The middle-aged man released his true essence and aura. He was a martial grand master. Kleber laughed as he walked away. Clearly this man had been posted to assure that they could not leave the cabin. A lackey, who was accompanying Kleber as he walked away, stated, Young master, that commoner doesn't understand the order of things, and thinks he can pursue Delphina. I am assuming you will teach him a lesson in the coming days. Kleber reasoned, There is no hurry. Cousin Delphina just arrived. Father and I will hold a banquet tonight to entertain her, and the emissary who came from the Great Sun Holy Land to investigate the disappearances. I trust you will help me assure that nothing goes awry during this important event. When everything is settled, we will deal with that brat. Anyway, they won't be able to escape. I've posted one of our best guards. The lackey expressed some anxiety. But think of Miss Delphina's nature. When she learns we have put her savior in the servants' quarters, she will surely want to intervene. I fear she will go to them and secure new accommodations for them herself. Kleber's footsteps slowed down, and he said proudly, That won't happen. After tonight's banquet, Cousin Delphina will never remember that brat again. And by tomorrow, he will no longer be a problem for any of us. With that, they increased their pace and disappeared. In the wooden house, Sosimo's expression returned to calm. What should we do now? He queried Maximus. Wait! Maximus exclaimed. Wait? Asked Sosimo. That's right. We don't know anything right now, so we can only wait. When night comes, I'll go and investigate, Maximus proposed. You're going to investigate? Not me? Sosimo pressed. Of course. You only have a martial master internal strength base. If you go, he'll definitely be discovered," Maximus stated in a straightforward tone. Sosimo immediately choked. He wanted to ridicule Maximus, but he remembered that Maximus had already reached the peak of the Martial King realm. No one in the City Lord's mansion was stronger than him. If Maximus went to investigate, the possibility of him being discovered was naturally low. 
When he thought of this, Sasamo shut his mouth. However, a trace of worry flashed across his face. This worry was directed at Delphina. He knew the middle-aged man posted at their door was there to keep him from reuniting with Delphina. Clearly, Kleber felt he could control her every move. He had a bad feeling in his heart. He reasoned, Brother, I keep feeling that Kleber is going to do something to Delphina. When you go and investigate tonight, will you make sure she's safe? Maximus nodded in agreement. The dragon water horse, which was now in human form, commented, Humans make everything so complicated. If we capture that city lord, everything will be fine, right? Maximus said in a sullen tone, The city lord likely has some sort of more powerful backer. Otherwise, he would not be acting so brazenly. Offending the city lord is one thing, but offending his backer is quite another. Sasamo let out a long sigh, his face full of worry. He could not help but think of any way possible to humiliate Kleber. Maximus glanced at Sasamo, but didn't say anything. He knew that this situation was more complicated than they could possibly imagine. The night fell quickly. The moon was high in the sky, and the night breeze gently blew. Maximus quietly dashed out of the wooden house, and surprisingly, the guard, whose name was Zeka, ignored him. This was due to the strange fluctuations around Maximus's body, which were manifestations of his divine soul. These fluctuations were affecting Zeka's consciousness and perception. As Maximus walked by, he couldn't detect it. It seemed to him like nothing was there at all. In order to prevent Zeka from secretly spying on him, Maximus had left a small portion of his divine soul power in Zeka's consciousness before he left. This would give Zeka the illusion that Maximus was still sitting quietly in the wood cabin. There were indeed guards patrolling the city lord's mansion at night, but these guards were only at the martial master level, so how could they discover Maximus? He thus didn't use the power of his divine soul. He could rely on his speed alone. Maximus had overheard Kleber announcing that the city lord would hold a banquet for Delphina that evening. However, he didn't know the location. So his divine soul power surged out. With his current power, only martial gods would be able to sense it. Very quickly, Maximus sensed the spatial energy of a peak martial king. His mind shook, and he quietly moved away. When he was safely concealed, Maximus's divine soul force enveloped the entire hall. The divine soul power transmitted the situation and conversations in the hall to Maximus's mind, one by one. He was not physically detectable there, but everything that happened in the hall was known by Maximus. His eyes widened as he learned through this method that the event was being hosted in honor not only of Delphina, but also the Alexei family emissary who had come to investigate the disappearances. It made sense. Even if Delphina was a guest, she was still just a kid. With the city lord's status, there was no need for him to specifically host a banquet for her. The real center of attention here was the Alexei family martial warlord. Maximus knew this man, as he was a well-known cultivator in the Alexei prefecture, and he could tell that as the emissary spoke to the Yoji city lord, there was a trace of vigilance and caution in his voice. He clearly didn't fully trust the city lord either. However, the city lord was so eloquent and charming that the emissary gradually relaxed. In addition, he had arranged for spectacular entertainment, including the city's finest dancers and musicians. On the other side of the room, Kleber was deep in conversation with Delphina. Maximus could sense the disgust and impatience hidden in Delphina's eyes. In front of her elders, Delphina obviously wouldn't dare to disrespect Kleber, but she wanted with every fiber of her being to get out of this conversation. The city lord turned to the emissary, whose name was Fergal, and commented, Ah! The most famous singer in the land seems to be approaching our table. She is clearly curious about your presence. 
Fergal immediately sensed that this was all a ruse to charm and distract him. Further, like Maximus, he suspected that the City Lord had something to do with Urbane's disappearance. He thus politely smiled, but ultimately ignored the approaching woman, hoping she would turn her attention elsewhere. But she looked him straight in the eye and offered, Well, hello. Such a handsome man. I hope we can get better acquainted during your visit. Her beautiful eyes were extremely intelligent and filled with seductive charm. Fergal's resolve faltered for a moment. He then explained in a stern tone, I have enjoyed your performance, but I am married. The city lord interjected in an astonished tone, Oh, I had no idea. Look at me, trying to play the matchmaker. Apologies, sir. He then picked up a glass of wine and consumed it in one gulp. Fergal smiled and waved his hand, then assured his host, Please, it's no problem. Naturally, you had no idea. Thinking it was perhaps an honest mistake after all, Fergal raised his glass and accepted the toast. The singer bit her lips as she said sadly, Well, it was a pleasure to meet you. I will take my leave now. Fergal nodded politely and smiled, but just then he was struck by the woman's perfume, which seemed to have a hypnotic power over him. Even after she walked away, he felt like he had been transported to another dimension of reality in which he could think only of her. Strange, he muttered to himself. Fergal's heart trembled, and he immediately circulated his martial arts heart sutra. Only then was he able to regain his focus on the mission at hand. A trace of disappointment flashed across the eyes of Yoji City's city lord and the singer. They did not expect Fergal to have such strong willpower. When Maximus saw this scene, he immediately understood what the two of them had done. Furthermore, Fergal had already fallen into their trap. His vigilance had faded, and now the city lord had him eating out of his hand. After an unknown period of time, Fergal's expression became more and more confused, and his thoughts became chaotic. On the other side of the room, Delphina had already fainted. The city lord commented slyly, Fergal, you are a drunk. He then gave a hearty laugh. Before Fergal could respond, his vision went blurry, then black. Kleber commented, Ha! The fragrant spells seem to have worked. As he looked down at the unconscious emissary, Father, should we execute him now? Kleber queried the city lord. Just then, the singer, who was known as Miss Fragrant Sky, walked back in the room and snickered as she commented, huh, Leave this man to me. The city lord reasoned in a solemn tone, Of course, I will not refuse. But remember, Fergal is a martial warlord so he will have an exceptional degree of resistance to the fragrant spell and the soul-stealing wine. I would guess he will recover his senses in a few days' time. Miss Heavenly Fragrance waved her hand, then slyly continued. I know that, but I figure maybe tonight I can get him to promise me some of his riches. Clever rolled his eyes. The City Lord whose name was Odran, nodded when he heard this, then offered, In that case, hand him over to me tomorrow. I will then hand him over to my master, who will implant the servant seal in him. Ah, that all sounds familiar. That's right, we had the same plan with Urbane, Miss Fragrant Sky hissed. Then she let out a laugh and licked her lips. Clever felt a chill run down his spine. Miss Fragrance Sky was truly ruthless in her methods, too much even for him. Maximus's expression darkened. He knew well the purpose of this servant seal, and he immediately made the connection with Urbane's disappearance. Could it be that he had already been implanted with such a seal? Odran's next statement confirmed his guess. He stated proudly, 
Soon, both Urbane and Fergal will carry the Servant Heart seal. They will then do my master's bidding. When they are sent back to the Alexi Prefecture, they will ambush the family. I can't wait to see the looks on their faces. Though, that will all take some time. Urbane needs to mature and grow stronger. Maximus had confirmed that Odran and the others had malicious intent toward the Alexi family. But he also heaved a sigh of relief. They wouldn't act immediately, which meant he had time to intervene and save Urbane. Maximus hid in the dark and continued to observe the hall interior with his divine soul. At this point, Odran walked over to Clever, and both of them pondered the unconscious Delphina. The soul-stealing wine has had quite the effect on her, commented Odran. Soon, we will be able to place the Servant Heart seal in her as well. Clever merely nodded, thinking of the glory that was to come for his family. Then, he returned to his chamber. As Clever was getting undressed for bed, he suddenly felt an ominous shadow behind him. He was shocked. He turned his head and shouted, Who is it? Before he could see clearly, he felt pain in his neck and lost consciousness. Maximus jumped down and caught Clever's falling body. Throwing Clever onto the ground, Maximus felt a tinge of uncertainty. What should he do now? If he knocked Clever out, Delphina would be fine. But when Clever woke up tomorrow, he would definitely try to piece together what had happened to him the night before. When that time came, he would feel compelled to alert Odran that there was an intruder in their midst. Similarly, killing Clever would cause quite a stir. Maximus wanted to directly capture Odran, but that surely wouldn't be a simple prospect. No doubt Odran was connected to his backer by a servant seal, and who knew how powerful this master was? Wait! Maximus suddenly remembered that after killing so many geniuses in the Chaos Secret Realm, he had obtained a divine pill that could confuse the soul. He wondered if this divine pill would be useful in the martial arts continent. With a flip of his palm, the divine pill appeared in Maximus's hand. He mused, it's a divine pill after all. Even if the laws of heaven and earth differ here and cause the effects to be limited, it should be effective on a mere martial master. Thinking of this, Maximus opened Kleber's mouth and prepared to throw the divine pill into it. However, he paused and muttered to himself, Huh, this pill targets the soul, and yet the servant heart seal is also related to the soul. When Kleber consumes this pill, will it alert his master? Maximus did not dare to take the risk and could only sigh as he withdrew his hand. Then what should I do next? He queried aloud. He closed his eyes and began to think. He recalled everything he had seen since he had arrived at the city lord's mansion, combing the data for clues. After a few minutes, Maximus suddenly opened his eyes. A bright light flashed across them. I remember, Kleber said Delphina's cousin Niusa had a cold, so she was bedridden and couldn't go out. But then why was her mother absent from the banquet as well? That doesn't make sense. Could it be that the city lord has locked up his wife and daughter for some reason? He paused before continuing. But why would he do that in the first place? Since the slave seal had already been planted on city lord Odran, there was no reason for his wife to escape, or so Maximus figured. He mused to himself, whatever the case, the city lord's wife must be the key piece to this puzzle. But the question was, where was she right now? Although his divine soul gave him extraordinary powers of perception, he had no idea what kind of internal strength base the city lord's wife possessed. Thus, he had no idea whether she could block his perceptual faculties. Looks like I need to find a way to search her soul, Maximus muttered to himself. He knew he could not do this through Kleber, who had the servant heart seal imprinted on his soul. He didn't want the people behind Kleber to sense his actions. Therefore, 
he resolved to find a random person in the city lord's mansion to serve as a conduit. He assumed a servant would be safe, as clearly this person would not be thought of as significant enough to be implanted with the heart seal. Having found a good candidate, Maximus brought him to the soul-searching space so Lord Flame could take action. Lord Flame used the Nine Flames fire formula to search the servant's memories. The process was harmless. Soon, Maximus had learned where the city lord's wife lived. He took action immediately, moving stealthily yet determinedly through the dark. As expected, she has been imprisoned, he stated as he approached her chamber and spotted a series of early period martial master guards packed tightly around the entrance. However, in the darkness, Maximus's divine soul sensed many powerful existences. There were even some martial kings among them. It seemed like these hidden experts were the main monitoring force for Madame City Lord. Maximus smiled and unleashed his divine soul power, affecting the visual perception of the hidden experts. The influence of Maximus's divine soul resulted in these experts seeing the wrong image but it would not cause any harm to their souls. Naturally, the mastermind of the whole operation would not be able to detect anything through the servant heart seals. Furthermore, Maximus was only certain that the city lord of Yoji City had been struck by the seal. As for the others, he had no idea whether they had been affected. The room was quiet. The candlelight flickered. The only person present was a middle-aged woman, dressed in ordinary clothes, kneeling on a futon. She put her hands together, praying for something. Given Maximus's realm, it was easy for him to move without making a sound. However, in order to startle this woman, he purposely made a sound. This middle-aged woman was a half-step martial king. This sound was extremely soft, but she could still register it clearly. Who is it? Has someone come to rescue me? She declared to the empty room. She slowly turned around. Her eyes were filled with shock as she looked at the scene in front of her, for she beheld a six-year-old child. Why was he here? How had he broken in? Furthermore, that sound had clearly come from a movement technique that had been cultivated to an extremely profound level. Otherwise, it would not have been so subtle. No matter how one looked at it, a six-year-old child shouldn't have been that strong. Who exactly are you? The middle-aged woman queried as she stared at Maximus. With her experience, she naturally knew that this person was extraordinary. Maximus smiled but didn't answer her question. Instead, he asked her back. Who did you think I was? The woman, whose name was Wanda, frowned. She had not expected to be interrogated in turn, so she ventured. I don't know how you got in. You must have some tricks up your sleeve. But trust me, you don't want to stick around here. You should leave. Maximus was unmoved as he explained. Madam, don't worry. With those useless sacks outside, we're surely safe. I only wanted to ask you some questions. But may I venture a guess? I think you assumed the person who had entered was your husband, Odran. Wanda was shocked, but she didn't say anything. Given her silence, Maximus could only surmise that she already knew about Odran and the servant heart seal. This made him curious. Why didn't Wanda have a servant seal of her own? So, am I correct? Maximus ventured in a polite tone. This has nothing to do with you. You should leave quickly, Wanda insisted in a low voice. Please, I just have a few questions, Maximus gently insisted. Wanda had a helpless expression as she cautiously looked around her. She then sighed and said, Go ahead, but then, please trust me, you must go. You will be in trouble already, as will anyone you are traveling with. This made Maximus even more sure that Wanda was aware of her husband's situation. 
thinking of this, he got straight to the point and declared, Madam, may I ask if Odran has been struck by the Servant Heart seal? Wanda's eyes suddenly turned cold, and she questioned, How did you know? She had originally thought that Maximus had used some special method to sneak here in order to find the whereabouts of a family member or friend. Who would have thought that he knew about the Servant Heart seal? This was not simple. Who exactly are you? Wanda persisted, a bit of panic in her voice. Maximus didn't reveal his identity. Instead, he commented, As I expected, Madam knows. But may I ask, why were you spared? He was cautiously optimistic, but at the same time, had no idea whose side Wanda was on. Wanda couldn't figure out Maximus's identity at the moment, and she hesitated to give him much more information. Given his age and his abilities, she assumed he must have come from an extraordinarily powerful family. Perhaps this was a good opportunity to save her daughter. At the same time, perhaps he had been sent to test her resolve. She took a deep breath and decided to try her luck. She would tell Maximus everything and hope that he was on her side. When she was finished, Maximus's expression was full of shock. It turned out that before Odran had been planted with the servant seal, he had not been the same ruthless character. In fact, he had doted on his daughter and been affectionate and caring toward his wife. At the same time, Odran's mother had worked to suppress her daughter-in-law, who was from a more powerful family. This was a typical story of enmity between a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. Further, Odran had fathered a first son with a mistress, further cementing the conflict between him and Wanda. This caused a thorn to grow in their marriage, and gradually, their relationship deteriorated. Clever, who was the firstborn son, developed a domineering personality. Wanda naturally didn't like him, which in turn upset Odran. Clever was his pride and joy, and he spoiled him. The conflict quickly intensified. By the time Odran was implanted with the Servant Heart seal, they were essentially not speaking to each other. Everyone in Yoji City knew they were estranged. Yet even then, Odran harbored a unique love for Wanda, his true wife. Thus, when the Mastermind came to Yoji City and forced Odran to accept the Servant's Heart seal, he demanded that his wife be protected and left out of the gambit. This shocked her. She had never thought he would make such a gesture. All the resentment in her heart lifted at that moment. However, after being hit by the Servant Heart seal, Odran's character changed dramatically. Even if Wanda had wanted to recover her relationship with Odran, she would not have been able to do it. Now that Wanda was imprisoned, she had been essentially abandoned by her husband. The Mastermind really let Madam go? Maximus asked rhetorically in surprise. Wanda smiled bitterly before explaining. After my husband was hit by the Servant Heart seal, his personality changed drastically. The Mastermind's plan had been accomplished. He had no reason to pay any attention to me. Maximus understood. No matter how much Odran loved Wanda before the Servant Heart seal was planted, now he had no regard for her at all. At the same time, it was clear to Maximus that at some point, Odran would give Wanda over to the Mastermind so that he could implant the Servant Heart seal in her. Other than Odran, who else has a servant imprint? Maximus queried. Wanda explained, Only some of his men, as well as a few of his mistresses. Maximus's eyes darkened, and he added, Surely clever too, right? He was still mindful of the need to protect Delphina by suppressing Clever. He planned to use his divine essence to redirect him, but this would of course affect Clever's soul, which would in turn alert the Mastermind. Amid Maximus's anxiety, 
Wanda announced. No, Kleber was not implanted with the Servant Heart seal. Why? Maximus asked in happy surprise. Wanda sneered with hatred in her eyes, then went on. The whole plan was Kleber's. He was the first to meet this person and invite him into the City Lord's mansion, where he targeted my husband. This is likely why Kleber has remained untouched. Maximus didn't care why Kleber wasn't planted with the servant seal. As long as he was free of this connection to the mastermind, things would be simpler. Are you sure about this? Can you guarantee it? Maximus pressed in an almost panicked tone. Of course, Wanda shot back. She was somewhat taken aback by Maximus's doubt and felt the tone in the room change. Maximus noticed Wanda's gaze and hurriedly said, I only ask because Kleber is the key figure in solving this matter. It is very important that we are 100% sure he is not implanted with the Servant Heart seal. Wanda looked confused. How could Kleber be the key? Maximus had no choice but to tell her about Delphina. Wanda was so shocked that her voice became shrill as she exclaimed, What? Delphina is here? Is she safe? When the matter involved Delphina, Wanda could not remain calm. Suddenly, Wanda knelt down and pleaded, I beg you, I must save Delphina. No, I cannot let... Her voice trailed off. Maximus hurriedly helped Wanda up and offered, Madam, don't worry. Since Kleber is not under the servant's seal, things will be much easier. You just wait here. Take care of yourself. I will find Urbane, and we will return to get you. Wanda's eyes lit up. Urbane? She shouted. And your name is Alexi, I presume. Could it be? Wanda originally thought that Maximus's family only had a martial emperor or martial saint in its ranks. This was already impressive to her, but she had never imagined that this small child came from the great Alexi family. Now her trust in Maximus was unshakable, and she considered herself saved. Wanda could only assume that some demigod from the Alexi family had helped Maximus reach this point. Looking at Wanda's hopeful eyes, Maximus curled the corner of his mouth. He didn't say that it was purely his own ability that allowed him to enter her chamber undetected. Even if he said it, Wanda wouldn't believe it. Instead, it would only make her concerned that the Alexei family didn't take this matter seriously. Under normal circumstances, no one would place their hopes on a mere six-year-old child. Therefore, Maximus maintained his silence and let Wanda imagine her own scenario. After her shock had faded, Wanda remembered that she still hadn't answered Maximus's question. She slowly stated, When your brother arrived, my husband had just been implanted with the Servant Heart seal, so he was still able to resist a little. After all, my husband is a peak Martial King expert and is only half a step away from becoming a Martial Warlord. That's why I still had some freedom at that time. I'm not too sure about the specifics. I only know that your brother drank some sort of wine before fainting. In the end, he was dragged away and implanted with the Servant Heart seal. At that point, my daughter and I had essentially been locked up. We received no more news. Maximus nodded and queried, Do you know anything about this wine? Wanda shook her head. Maximus sighed. It seemed like he would have to rely on Kleber's knowledge after all. When he thought of Miss Fragrant Sky, Maximus asked, Do you know about Miss Fragrant Sky? I heard that she is a famous singer in Yoji City. Wanda shook her head, then explained, No, it's not that simple. She arrived in Yoji City with the mastermind of this whole plot. She was there when your brother passed out. Maximus was startled. So Miss Fragrant Sky was the mastermind's accomplice? Who knew? He thought back to her effect on the Alexei family emissary. Madam, did Miss Fragrant Sky also have a servant heart seal planted in her? He queried. I don't know. I don't think so. She seemed to be a willing accomplice, Wanda offered. 
Maximus pondered the situation. He would have to proceed cautiously. Madam, I will take my leave now, Maximus announced. His expression became solemn, and he used his movement technique to disappear. Wanda widened her eyes. After a long while, she sighed and said, As expected of the Alexei family, a six-year-old kid already has such means. What a joke. I initially thought that it was an elder secretly attacking us. Maximus returned to the City Lord's mansion. Delphina had opened her eyes, but she had no ability to focus on what she saw. Kleber, on the other hand, was still unconscious. After confirming that Kleber's mind did not have a servant mark, Maximus happily stuffed the pill into his mouth. In no time at all, Kleber opened his eyes blankly. Maximus immediately interrogated him, especially about the soul-stealing wine. Sure enough, the wine was linked to Miss Fragrant Sky. And it was not extraordinary at all. Rather, it was just regular wine that had some colorless, odorless substance added to it that acted as a medium for Miss Fragrant Sky's spell. The combination of her fragrance and the liquid would cause people to lose their minds and become mere puppets at the mercy of others. Because Fergal had previously confirmed that there was no problem with the wine, he had been careless afterward. And in the end, he fainted and was kidnapped by Miss Heavenly Fragrance. Maximus pondered for a moment and asked again, can the mastermind sense your father's condition through the servant heart seal? Kleber explained. No, he can't monitor my father's everyday movements. But if my father is in duress or his soul is injured, he can sense that something is wrong with the servant heart seal. He might even be able to witness the scene as if he were there. Kleber's tone was calm and creepy, but Maximus wanted to know more. He pressed. And does the soul-stealing wine leave any trace? Not really, replied Kleber. Its effect is usually temporary. Maximus asked some more questions. Kleber knew the answer to some, but others he had no idea about. For example, the hidden location of the mastermind was only known to Odran. Maximus guessed that this was because Kleber wasn't marked with the servant heart seal. Or perhaps the mastermind didn't take Kleber seriously and felt no need to pass important information to him. The effect of the pill was to confuse one's soul. Now that Kleber had lost this ability, the effect hadn't disappeared. Maximus was thinking about how to deal with Kleber. But just then, his attention was frozen on Delphina. He took out another pill from his storage bag. This one was also part of his harvest from the Chaos Secret Realm. Its grade wasn't high, but it could remove all negative effects from one's body. Still, Delphina was only a martial master. Even if the rules of the miniature world were different, the effect of the pill would be enough to bring her back to consciousness. After Delphina swallowed the pill, her gaze gradually became lively and warm. Then. She screamed in utter surprise and immediately sat up. She could not remember the situation that led to her losing her soul, but she still had a vague impression of it. Delphina had just woken up, but upon spotting Kleber, she assumed he had been responsible for her delirium. She immediately sent a sixth grade martial master attack his way. In response, Maximus merely extended his finger and blocked the attack. Delphina felt utterly frozen. Delphina, don't panic. It's me, Maximus uttered calmly. Delphina paused when she heard the familiar voice. Then her mind started to clear up. She vaguely remembered that Kleber had been knocked out himself by some mysterious force. Her eyes widened. Then she nearly screamed. Maximus? She had never thought he would be here when she awoke. But of course, she was no fool. After waking up and seeing the current situation, she knew it was Maximus who had saved her. She was grateful for this, but still utterly confused. Wasn't this Maximus a mere child? 
How had he accomplished such a feat? The fact that he had been able to overcome the guards patrolling the city lord's mansion alone was shocking to her. Then she remembered Sosimo's story of Maximus subduing the dragon water horse. She had at first thought he was exaggerating, but now she considered the possibility that he had been telling the truth. Surely, she was looking at a future martial god. Maximus was taken aback by Delphina's shock at first, but then he remembered he was in his reincarnated form and appeared to be a small child. He understood her emotions completely. Delphina expressed her gratitude, then asked about what had happened. Maximus explained, You only fell into this state because you drank the soul-stealing wine. At this point, there was no need to hide anything from Delphina. He needed her help to figure out what exactly was going on with Kleber. And to do that, they needed to fool Kleber into thinking his plan had succeeded. Delphina's heart was in turmoil. She never thought that such a thing would happen to her uncle's family. Her uncle's personality had changed greatly after being implanted with the servant Mark. Although her uncle had pampered Kleber in the past, he would never allow his son to act so ruthlessly before, nor would he have senselessly imprisoned his wife and daughter. Delphina was even more surprised, however, when she learned that Maximus and Sosimo came from the great Alexei family and had come to Yoji City with a serious mission. No wonder Sosimo has a grade 7 martial master internal strength base at such a young age, and his combat strength has even exceeded that of a martial master. But compared to Sosimo, Maximus is even more awe-inspiring. She mused to herself, thinking that the Alexei family had indeed earned its reputation as the producer of the greatest young cultivators in the region. In the past, Delphina had thought that the rumors were a little exaggerated, but now that she had met Maximus, she knew it was all true. After thinking for a while, Delphina advised, Maximus, thank you, but you should go. When Kleber awakes, he will expect that you have been banished and I am by his side, helping him recuperate. Maximus nodded firmly, then fled from the room with haste. Delphina gritted her teeth and stared at Kleber. She despised him, but at the same time knew that he wasn't really all bad. Rather, he had fallen under the influence of his father. Taking a deep breath, she began to think hard about what story she should tell Kleber. She did her best to look destitute and bewitched so that he would believe she was under the spell of the servant heart seal and would do his bidding. Yet a trace of disgust flashed across her face. She couldn't suppress it. Deep down, she hated Kleber and everything he stood for. With Kleber's brain, when he wakes up tomorrow and sees me like this, he should be able to believe it. She muttered to no one in particular. Yet even though she knew that Kleber was likely to be fooled, she was still nervous. She was afraid that he would somehow find out the truth. She didn't care about her own reputation. She wasn't that proud. But she worried about the safety of her cousin Niusa, as well as Maximus and Sosimo. Since we have already reached this step, we can only depend on the will of heaven, she stated solemnly. Closing her eyes, Delphina went to sleep. Whether she could succeed or not would depend on the whims of tomorrow. At the same time, Maximus was also considering whether he should go and save Fergal. He pondered, I owe it to Fergal since he is an emissary of the Alexei family. On the other hand, I don't think that Miss Fragrant Sky can cause any real harm. I should focus on the task at hand. He took a deep breath, then looked up and muttered, Forgive me, Fergal. With that, he headed back to the wood cabin, where Sosimo was waiting for him. When Maximus returned, Sosimo rushed out the front door to greet him, then immediately queried, Have you found any news about Urbane? Maximus told his brother everything, leaving out the parts that concerned Delphina, as he knew these would likely enrage Sosimo and compel him to act rashly. What? 
Odran was planted with a servant heart mark? And Urbane too? No wonder. Sosimo's expression changed dramatically. He could not help but imagine the possibility that their big brother's personality could change just like Odran. Maximus calmly explained, Tomorrow, Odran will go to the place where this mastermind is hiding. I will follow him secretly and then get rid of the mastermind. At that point, I think the servant's heart seal will automatically dissolve. I will go too, Sosimo suddenly added. Maximus countered, No, don't forget that Delphina is still in the City Lord's mansion and needs your protection. Besides, no one knows how the mastermind uses the servant heart seal to control others. If he is forced into a dangerous situation, he could well activate those who possess the seal to fight for him, initiating a massacre in the City Lord's mansion. You and the Dragon Water Horse must stay here to protect Delphina and the others. Sosimo opened his mouth and wanted to say something, but Maximus then pointed out the core problem. Look, if you follow me, can you guarantee you won't be detected by Odran? Sosimo immediately shut his mouth. Although Sosimo had many treasures, he was a mere martial master. Surely he could not conceal his identity in the face of someone like Odran. All right, I'll stay in the City Lord's mansion, but I want you to take this, Sosimo declared, then threw a single-use attack treasure to Maximus. Maximus did not refuse. The night passed quickly, and dawn soon arrived. Kleber blinked his eyes and woke up from his daze. He only felt a dull pain in his head. At this moment, images flashed through his mind. He abruptly stood up, then looked around the room. He smiled. Delphina was by his side. Clearly the spell had worked, and he had succeeded in making her fall in love with him. In terms of internal strength bases, Delphina was similar to Kleber. However, Kleber had not put much effort into his internal strength cultivation. He had instead consumed quite a number of pills, which was why his foundation was somewhat unstable. Delphina had cultivated to the peak of the sixth grade martial master realm, but she had relied on her own hard work and solid foundation. Thus, the moment Kleber woke up, she also woke up from her deep sleep and quickly stabilized her aura so that he would not suspect anything. Luckily, Kleber quickly put on his clothes and left. Otherwise, Delphina would have likely lost her cool and launched an attack on him. She loathed him after all. By this point, a few maidservants had already walked in to help her bathe and dress. At the same time, Odran had already departed for Yoji City, surrounded by several of his subordinates. Maximus secretly followed him. With Maximus's superb internal strength base, powerful movement technique, and unparalleled divine soul strength, Odran and the others had no idea that they were being followed. Not long after Odran and the others left, they arrived at a desolate place outside the city, surrounded by huge boulders. Odran climbed one of the most imposing boulders, a mass at least 10 feet tall. He pressed on a certain point about halfway up, and a stone door appeared and opened. Odran and his followers disappeared behind it, then the rock became monolithic once again. As Odran and the others disappeared, Maximus quietly approached. Yet he did not immediately open the stone door. Instead, he waited quietly for a moment before using his divine soul power to sense the nature of this mass. He found a groove at a certain spot. He slammed his palm against the groove, and the groove instantly caved in. With a rumbling sound, Maximus flashed into the boulder. He then waited for a period of time to move forward, in case Odran and the others had heard the sound of the door opening. Inside the mountain rock, there was a completely different world. A long flight of stairs led underground. Maximus's divine soul power probed downward. After finding Odran and the others, he went into stealth mode. At the bottom of the vast chamber, luminous pearls on both sides lit up the eerie space. A black-clothed youth sat cross-legged on the stone platform, 
circulating the internal strength method. Traces of black gas floated out from the youth's head. The youth's face was pale, and his lips were purple. It was obvious that he was cultivating an evil technique, and that his evil technique was about to reach a major completion stage. Next to the young man, an older man stood with his hands clasped behind his back, guarding his master. The familiar face belonged to Maximus's missing older brother, Urbane. Greetings, master, Odran stated solemnly. The young man slowly opened his eyes. A purple light flashed and disappeared. A majestic force swept out in the next instant. The entire space was filled with his extremely powerful aura pressure. Cold sweat broke out on Odran's and the other's foreheads. Odran was able to withstand the pressure, as he was a martial king. However, his subordinates could not help but kneel. They were trembling, and their expressions were filled with fear. Although Urbane had broken through to the martial king realm, he wasn't at the peak. At this moment, he was half kneeling on the ground, trying his best to resist the pressure of the space. Maximus, who was hiding in the dark, used his divine soul to sense the young man's internal strength base. He could not help but be shocked. This young man had already reached the peak of the martial emperor realm. It seemed like he was about to break through to the martial saint realm. What kind of evil technique did this guy cultivate? It has skyrocketed to such an extent in such a short period of time. Maximus mused to himself as his eyes sparkled. From Wanda's words, Maximus already knew that this person's name was Murillo Prado, a member of the great son Holy Land's Prado family. This family's great ancestor was an intermediate martial god. They thus felt they were in contention to replace the Alexei family as the top force in the land. Although Murillo looked young, he was actually over 300 years old. He was also an outstanding figure among the younger generation of the Prado family. He had suppressed the younger generation of the Great Sun Holy Land for over a hundred years, including the younger generation of the Alexei family. His reputation was a source of respect and fear. The last hundred years or so had been extremely painful and trying for the Alexei family, with countless experts and other clans secretly laughing at them and taking pleasure in their decline. Rumors ran wild that the Alexei family would be replaced by the Prado family in the near future. Although the Alexei family's grand elder was furious, he couldn't do anything about it as it was frowned upon for elders to intervene into the affairs of the younger generation. It wasn't until Maximus's father, Porphyo, came out of nowhere with his extraordinary strength that the situation was reversed. His innate sacred body allowed Porphyo to rise crazily within a short period of time. In the end, he defeated Murillo and took his position as the top member of the younger generation. By now, Porphyo was by far the more famous figure. Yet Maximus knew about Murillo, as at one point he had tried to court Maximus's mother. This had only increased the enmity between Porphyo and Murillo. And although Murillo's physique was not as good as Porphyo's, it was still extraordinary. It was a rare double physique. One of his physiques was the Phoenix Spirit Body and the other was the Myriad Thunder Spirit Body. These two physiques were both upper-level spirit bodies. Each of them would elevate their possessor to the status of genius. However, when they were combined, they became equivalent to saint physiques. Further, Murillo had tempered both to the sacred body level, so that he now technically possessed the Phoenix Sacred Body and the Myriad Thunder Sacred Body. He was thus even more powerful and abnormal than before. Maximus remembered that Murillo had a battle with his father a few years ago. At that time, his father was already a half-step martial saint, but Murillo 
was still a peak intermediate martial emperor. But now, it seemed like Murillo had already taken half a step into the martial saint realm, and it had taken a few short years. Although the gap between the peak of the mid-stage of Martial Emperor Realm and the half-step Martial Emperor Realm did not seem huge, it was in fact like a leap through the universe, as few warriors ever reached the latter stage. I heard that many young girls have gone missing in Yoji City. Could it be that the evil art that Marillo is cultivating is related to those young girls? If that's the case, Surely Yoji City was not the only place affected, Maximus thought aloud. If that was the case, then surely other city lords had been implanted with the Servant Heart seal. A cold expression flashed across Maximus's face. Marillo gradually withdrew the pressure he had been exerting. It was as if he did not see the expressions of Odran and the others. He said faintly, have you brought him here? Yes, Odran stated as he wiped the sweat from his forehead and asked the Grand Marshal Master's subordinate to carry Fergal over. Just a martial warlord? Forget it, Marillo spat out. He was obviously disappointed. Although he knew that the Alexei family wouldn't send a martial sovereign, he had still hoped for better. Odran cautiously proposed. Perhaps you should continue to provoke the Alexei family. If you do, surely they will feel compelled to send a more powerful emissary. Marilla waved his hand. He countered. No way. Those old men from the Alexei family are not fools. If they are overly concerned, they will send a martial saint, or perhaps even a demigod. I don't like my chances against such a figure. Odran had no choice but to give up after hearing this. Marillo, however, smiled as he continued. It is indeed disappointing to not have a martial emperor spy, but don't forget her bane. Her bane's identity is not simple. Even if he is only an early martial king, he might be more useful than a martial emperor. Odran and the others immediately said respectfully, you are wise, sir. Urbane knew that he was Marillo's chess piece, but because of the servant heart seal, he stated devoutly, Rest assured, my lord, I will follow your orders when I return to the Alexei family. I will destroy the Alexei family from the inside and allow the Prado family to replace them. At this moment, a round of applause was heard from the stairs. Who is it? Marillo blurted as his expression changed dramatically. Odran and the others also looked terrified. Just because they had been implanted with the Servant Heart seal didn't mean they were completely unaware of their surroundings. Odran and the others knew that if the news of their plan got out, their end would be miserable. Deep killing intent immediately emerged in their hearts. Under the gaze of Marillo and the others, Maximus slowly walked out from the shadows. They were shocked when they beheld him, for he still had the appearance of a small child. When Urbane saw Maximus, he blurted out, Brother? With this information, Marillo immediately guessed Maximus's identity. Good, good, good. Another son of Porphyos, and he seems an even greater genius, he uttered in a cold tone. Maximus stopped clapping and said coldly, So, you have implanted the Servant Heart seal throughout the land, trying to make all the other families into your slaves. Marillo's pupils shrunk. This fellow even knew about his secret technique? He immediately let out a ferocious laugh, then said cruelly, Little fellow, I have to say that you are outstanding, but you shouldn't have come here alone just to show off in front of me. If you had a mighty warrior from the Alexei family by your side, I would have some concerns. But you are alone. Marillo paused for effect, then suddenly shouted, Kill! The great martial masters behind him released their true energy one after another. 
Like huge birds spreading their wings, they all rushed toward Maximus. Colorful true energy sparkled throughout the space. All sorts of attacks converged into a river and blasted toward him. Maximus sneered. His small body dodged the attacks of the Grand Marshal Masters at a strange speed. Then he appeared in front of them with a confident demeanor. They were shocked. What they saw before them was a small child. Maximus moved quickly. Using his index and middle fingers, he aimed at the energy centers of his opponents. A strange power surged out from fingers into their bodies, depleting their auras. Soon, their true essences were unable to circulate. They immediately lost the ability to fight. These warriors had been struck by the Servant Heart Seal, so Maximus was unsure of their true nature. He thus wanted to sap their strength, but not kill them. He had no idea whether at their core they had good or bad morals. If they were in fact good, it would be unjust to kill them. After sealing off the energy center of these Grand Martial Masters, Maximus threw them out fiercely and transferred a trace of his true essence into their bodies. It had a numbing effect, and they lay on the ground motionless. Initially, Maximus had been attacked, but now that the battle was over, he had gained control. He seemed to be orchestrating the situation in the smoothest, most effortless manner possible. Odran's eyes widened when he saw this. Some of his followers were half-step martial kings, yet they had been subdued by a six-year-old. And it happened so quickly. Odran's expression turned cold. Then he uttered, No wonder you have the confidence to come here alone. Everyone knows the Alexei family is in a sorry state, but I guess they still have enough strength to produce true geniuses once in a while. You are truly your father's son. He paused for effect, then continued. However, no matter how extraordinary you are, you are only six years old. Urbane, I'll leave your little brother to you. Yes, master, Urbane declared as he stood up and looked at Maximus with a cold gaze. His eyes were not as gentle as they had been before. Suddenly, Urbane flew toward Maximus at a shocking speed. Maximus felt a terrifying force press down on him. It was Urbane's fierce kick, which was accompanied by a whistling sound. Tiger leap attack! Maximus could not help but mutter in recognition. Yet this expression did not change. His right palm suddenly struck out, and a vast force rushed forth, colliding with Urbane's explosive kick. Powerful air currents flowed in all directions. Maximus was as steady as a mountain, but Urbane was sent flying by the backlash. Odran was shocked once again. Marillo, meanwhile, stared at Maximus, his eyes turning red. What was going on here? How had the Alexi family produced such a figure if they were in rapid decline? The killing intent in Marillo's eyes intensified. He had to take care of this kid before he grew up. The Alexei family really hid this guy well. An innate top quality spiritual body? Unreal. He mused to himself. Then he continued. This guy has a high chance of achieving a pre-celestial top quality sacred body. Marillo clenched his fists tightly and his heart went crazy with jealousy. Sunflame body, condense, Urbane shouted, calling on his martial arts knowledge, even though he was now being controlled by Marillo. As he had sensed Maximus's power, he chose to unleash the signature special physique of the Alexei family. A purple sun symbol slowly formed on Urbane's forehead. It showed that Urbane's innate, top-quality spirit body had broken through to the level of a sacred body. As soon as the sun flame body was released, flames surrounded Urbane's body, and the high temperature filled the entire space. It was as if a firestorm had descended on the world. Flaming monument breaking hand, Urbane shouted. A terrifying flame power was condensed in his hand. The shocking power frightened even Odran. 
This wasn't because Odran's combat strength was weaker than Urbane's, but because the martial arts skill Urbane cast was too powerful. This move was equally close to a saint-level martial arts skill. Even though he was the city lord of Yoji City, Odran's strongest attack was only an upper-class spirit-level martial arts skill, and it was only considered average for this level. Ha! Urbane shouted out loudly, and his terrifying flaming hand danced like a wild snake, grabbing toward Maximus. Maximus's expression was cold, and he didn't move. Just as the flaming hand was about to grab him, a bright light flashed across his eyes. In the next moment, the extraordinary strength of a peak martial king surged out like a torrent. Maximus's attack produced a light that was even brighter than Urbane's sunflame body. The true essence condensed into his finger, and Maximus pointed directly at Urbane. Urbane's flaming monument-breaking hand was destroyed by the true essence that Maximus shot out. Urbane's face turned pale, and he began gasping for breath. In the next moment, a gust of wind blew under Maximus's feet, and he lunged at Urbane. Not good, Marillo blurted as he grabbed Urbane to remove him from the line of fire. The instant Maximus's speed was unleashed, an aura that was even stronger than a martial king's burst forth. Despite Marillo's extraordinary abilities, Maximus proved the faster hand, and he was able to grab Urbane before Marillo. Just as he had done with his other opponents, Maximus then sealed Urbane's energy center and used a sliver of true essence to numb Urbane's body. After his attack had succeeded, Maximus continued to retreat, widening the gap between him and Marillo. Martial Warlord! You have a Martial Warlord internal strength base! Marillo exclaimed, staring at Maximus with his heart in turmoil. Taking a deep breath, he continued with a cold expression. Kid, you shouldn't have come here alone. A martial warlord early period is indeed a rare expert in the outside world. However, I am a peak martial emperor, well on my way to becoming a martial saint. Marillo released his aura with all his might. The power of a martial saint spread out like a huge wave. Odran, who was close to him, kneeled over and began to wheeze. He was then sent flying. Waves of monstrous energy attacked him one after another. Yet Maximus stood proudly on the ground, his eyes cold. He was not affected at all. So what if his opponent was a peak martial emperor? So what if he was a half-step martial saint? Maximus had once been a true god of seven tribulations, and he had even taken on ancient gods. In Maximus's eyes, Marillo's pressure was in fact quite ridiculous.